good afternoon students good afternoon good afternoon sir good afternoon so uh, so only 16 students have joined till now but uh, we can just start with the class so if you remember last time we were talking about monoclonal antibodies right so we have talked about monoclonal antibodies what are monoclonal antibodies and how monoclonal antibodies can be generated in the lab right uh, so we talked about the hybridoma technology where two different cell types they are fused together to generate a hybrid cell or a hybridoma uh, which secretes specific antibody which is your monoclonal antibody right and monoclonal antibodies have lot of applications in fact they have been also tried in covid right i am sure you know this uh, so uh, we will talk about the applications of monoclonal antibodies uh, we have already seen the hybridoma technology the hat selection method right because the question is uh, in a culture in a uh, suspension you have different types of cells you have b cells you have my cells right and a mixture of myeloma 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 and uh, uh, b cell and uh, b cell b cell uh, so different combinations are there but we just need one type of cell to survive and that is your hybridoma cell right so obviously you have to prepare a media in such a way that it kills all the cells and if you remember uh, i just told you that b cells because they have a specific life span right so it will die after that so we don't need to worry about b cell because it will die when when its time is there right but myeloma cell it's a cancerous cell it will keep multiplying but we don't want that myeloma cell right so we need to kill that also so uh do you remember uh, so if if i ask a question to you like why hybridomas survive and why not others so who want to answer this why only hybridomas survive anyone why hybridomas survive and others do not survive okay i can see one hand being raised of manaswini okay i see another hand from yuvraj okay okay so maybe i'll start with yuvraj and uh, manaswini if yuvraj misses particular point or something then maybe you can add to it okay so yuvraj just switch on your camera and let us know Yes, you Raj. You are not audible. You Raj, you are not audible. so yuvraj you are not audible maybe i can then move to uh, manaswini sir am i audible yes you are audible okay i'll just switch on my camera yeah, yeah. so uh, the hybridoma is basically a um, cell which was formed from the fusion of a myeloma cell and a b cell which uh, produces uh, these antibodies so um, the hybridoma basically has properties of both the myeloma cell so the immortality of the myeloma cell it 
uh, retains that and it also has the genetic material from the b cell which uh, provides information for producing the antibodies so um because of this because of that immortality it was able to survive in that medium and um it could continuously produce um antibodies again and again because it had the information that it required along with the immortality from the myeloma cell and um, also since it's a heart medium right so it had the hypoxanthine and um, thymidine in the medium so it also had um, the enzyme which um, allowed it to um, survive in that uh, medium but then this was absent in just the separate b cells or the myeloma cells so um, it could, those two couldn't survive in the medium while the hybridoma since it retained the uh, certain properties it was able to okay so your answer is uh, fine but uh, you know it need to be fine tuned further okay because we are talking about uh, two specific genes here the hgprt and the tk the thymidine kinase right so it is there in the b cell uh, because it's a normal b cell but yes b cell has a lifespan so it will die after that particular time period we are using the mutated myeloma cell which does not have the hgprt or the thymidine kinase uh, gene right so it will not produce the enzyme which can help in using the salvage pathway right uh, because these cells already cannot use the de novo pathway which is already blocked by amino pectin which is one of the component of the hat medium right so just more fine tuning of uh, the answers right okay so what we can do is uh, i am going to assign you a quiz uh quickly we can do that on monoclonal antibodies uh, just to understand how much you know uh, how much you have understood uh, the concept of uh, hat medium and monoclonal antibodies and after that we will uh, see a video of monoclonal antibodies and then we may proceed with the applications of monoclonal antibody okay so let me just assign the quiz uh, to the class okay so i have assigned uh, the quiz so is it visible at your end now yes sir yes i think yes, it should be visible now yes okay so students quickly uh, complete this uh, mcq and uh, we can discuss the answers if you have any questions related to monoclonal antibody or hat selection anything you can discuss okay
so some students have submitted so others start submitting maybe in 2 minutes you should submit okay so half of the class has submitted the response so students do it fast a few more students left uh, do it fast
Okay, students. <clears throat> so I've got uh, the responses. Uh, let's discuss the answers. Okay, so let me start with the last question, which was hybridoma consist of and all of you have given the right answer. So at least this point is clear that the hybridoma, it consists of uh, a combination of the B cell and the myeloma cell. OK. OK, next question was uh, who got the Nobel Prize for the work on hybridoma technology? So it's George Kohler and Caesar Milstein. OK, and 90% of the students have given correct answer. OK, so. Uh, just be careful, it's George Kohler and Caesar Milstein. OK. OK, another question was. Hypoxanthine will allow growth by which pathway? OK, so we are talking about hypoxanthine, so it's not required for the de novo pathway. It is required for the salvage pathway. OK, so only 70 percent of you have given the right answer. So students, things are still not very clear to you. I don't know if you have gone back and uh, read the concept. So hypoxanthine will allow growth by salvage pathway. OK. Uh, next question was of aminopetrin. So aminopetrin inhibits which enzyme? So all of you have given the right answer. It's dihydrofolate reductase. OK. OK, question three was for fusing cells to create hybrid cell. What do we use? The correct answer is polyethylene glycol. Only one student has given wrong answer. Rest all of you have given the right answer. It is polyethylene glycol. Question four was HGPRT stands for. So all of you have given the right. Uh, no, 95% uh, of you have given the right answer. It is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. OK, uh, question, next question was aminopetrin blocks which pathway? All of you have given the right answer here. It's the de novo pathway. OK, so aminopetrin blocks the de novo pathway. So the cells then have to use the salvage pathway for production of nucleotides. OK. OK, so I think uh, things are clear to you now and uh, let me now share the video on uh, hybridoma technology so that whatever we discussed last time, you can just see it in the form of a video and the things would be clear to you. Uh, it will also uh, like refresh what we have learned through the slides. OK, and I'm sure after seeing this video, things will be more clear to you. Okay, So let me just share this. Uh, video. And now you all are familiar to the following concepts. Till now we have studied that in response to an antigen our immune system produces heterogeneous mixture of antibodies. These antibodies are of different specificities that is, these antibodies recognize different opitopes on the same antigen. 
The antibodies derived from the multiple clonal B-cells are known as polyclonal antibodies. We also understood that polyclonal antibodies have some limitations in diagnostic and therapeutic applications. Today we will study monoclonal antibodies. As the name reflects, monoclonal antibodies are derived from the clones of single activated B-cell. So, these antibodies will recognize and bind only one particular epitope on an antigen. We can also say that monoclonal antibodies are identical antibodies with same specificity. The technique of production of monoclonal antibodies was discovered by Georges J.F. Kohler and Cesar Milstein in 1975. This technique is known as hybridoma technology. They were jointly awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1984. Let's study in detail the technique of monoclonal antibody production. First step in production of monoclonal antibodies is the immunization of an animal. Usually the animal used is the mouse. Mouse is immunized with the antigen against which we need antibodies. Let's say this is our antigen, and it has four different epitopes. Mouse is injected with the antigen several times. As a result, mouse B lymphocytes are stimulated against the epitopes or antigenic determinants of the injected antigen. After several weeks, when these B lymphocytes reach to an optimal amount, the mouse is sacrificed. Spleen of mouse is removed aseptically. It is known to us that Spleen is the secondary lymphoid organ, and we can easily harvest activated B lymphocytes from spleen. Spleen is then subjected to mechanical or enzymatic disruption. This results in the release of cells. Activated B cells or plasma cells are separated from the normal spleen B cells by density gradient centrifugation. So, at the end of this step, we have activated B cells which are capable of producing antibodies against the specific epitopes present on the antigen. Next step is cell fusion. B lymphocytes have a short lifespan in cell culture on the antigen. So students, I hope this uh, concept is clear. Right? So, uh, so this is your antigen and this antigen has different epitopes, right? So uh, when you inject this whole antigen in an animal, right? So what happens? Antibodies are produced against all these different epitopes. So you can see uh, different plasma cells are formed and each plasma cell is producing specific antibody against a specific epitope okay i i hope this is clear is it clear so aisa nahi hai ki sirf ek hi antibody produce hogi different antibodies will be produced against the same antigen okay and specific epitopes clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Oh. Yes, sir. Next step is cell fusion. B lymphocytes have a short lifespan in cell culture. In this step, activated B lymphocytes are fused with myeloma cells. Here we need to note that these myeloma cells being used are mutated myeloma cells. Meloma cells are cancerous B cells, they can divide indefinitely in a culture. But their two genes are mutated first is HGPRT gene. Thus, they are not able to synthesize nucleotides by the salvage pathway. And second gene is the immunoglobulin genes. As a result of mutation in these genes, these meloma cells cannot produce their own antibodies. These mutations are represented as HGPRT negative and Ig negative. My first startup was called secondshadi.com.
So, student, is it clear till this point? Any questions till this point? No, sir. Okay. ओके फिर इसमें लेट्स सी आगे क्या होता है ओके मिस डन बाय मिक्सिंग टू टाइप ऑफ सेल्स इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ केमिकल फ्यूजन पॉलीएथिलीन ग्लाइकोल एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ सेल फ्यूजन वी विल हैव फाइव टाइप ऑफ सेल्स अनफ्यूज्ड बी सेल्स एंड फ्यूज्ड बी सेल्स अनफ्यूज्ड मिलोमा सेल्स एंड फ्यूज्ड मिलोमा सेल्स and hybrid cells formed by fusion of an activated b cell and a myeloma cell these hybrid cells are also known as hybridomas in our illustration we have four types of activated b cells each specific to one of the four epitopes on the antigen so hybrid cells will also be of four types now our next aim is to select these hybridomas from this mixture of cells Selection of hybridomas from the mixture of fused and unfused cells is done by using HAT medium. HAT stands for hypoxanthine, aminopterin, and thymidine. Recall that HAT medium is a selection medium from mammalian cell cultures. Selection of cells in this medium is based on the fact that there are two pathways of nucleotide synthesis in mammals. Aminopterin present in the HAT medium blocks the de novo pathway. The only way a cell can survive in HAT medium is by using the salvage pathway of nucleotide synthesis. HGPRT is a key enzyme in the salvage pathway. So, if cell has a non-functional HGPRT gene, the cell will die in the HAT medium. This is because for this cell both pathways of nucleotide synthesis will fail in HAT medium. In this step, the mixture of cells obtained after fusion step is transferred to the HAT medium. Fused and unfused B cells die within few days because of their short life span. They are not able to divide indefinitely in cell culture. Fused and unfused myeloma cells also die. This is because myeloma cells are HGPRT negative, and aminopterin present in the HAT medium blocks the de novo pathway. Hybrid cells or hybridomas survive in HAT medium. These hybrid cells are able to synthesize nucleotide by the salvage pathway. The functional HGPRT enzyme is contributed by the activated B cell partner. Also these cells are able to divide indefinitely and this property is contributed by the myeloma cell partner. Therefore, what remains in HAT medium are the desired hybrid cells producing antibodies against the specific epitopes on an antigen. Now these hybrid cells are again a mixture of B cells producing antibodies of different specificities. Recall that each Okay students is it clear how hat selection works so you you just saw in this video also that b cells died and uh, the myeloma cells they also died okay because they were hgprt or tk mutant okay so they were not able to use the de novo pathway because of amino pectin and they also could not use the salvage pathway because of absence of hgprt or tk gene okay so then what was left the hybrid cells right so the only the hybrid cells were uh, there but it's a mixture of myeloma cell and b cell but myeloma cells did not have the hgprt from and so from where this hgprt came it came from the normal b cell right so this cell now have the hgprt gene which is provided by the b cell okay so now it can use the salvage pathway and the cell can survive okay and this is what we want okay so but 
द स्टोरी डजन एंड हेयर ठीक है सिर्फ उसको इस मीडिया पे ग्रो कराना ही हमारा अल्टीमेट एम नहीं है राइट सो लेट्स सी व्हाट वी नीड टू डू फर्दर Each of these B cells will produce antibodies specific to different epitopes on the same antigen. Our aim is to select and propagate single antibody producing hybrid cell. We need to isolate these hybridomas and grow them individually. Therefore, next step is the isolation of hybridomas of single specificity. This is done by a method known as limiting dilution. In this method, the cells or hybridomas are distributed in multi-well culture plates at very low density. This is done such that, on an average, each well contain a single cell. I think you should consider deep strengthening. Hmm? No, I can't go on that. <laughs> deep strengthening has many health benefits. It helps your oral health and adds to your beautiful smile. And what it does. okay uh, so let me share it again uh, so now we will be talking about so once you have already uh, okay so once you have been able to grow hybridoma cells right you need to separate them also because you know one antigen will have different epitopes right and you need to have specific monoclonal antibodies against a specific epitope right so now from that mixture you have to separate them into different wells okay so let me again start the video in the next step These hybridomas are screened for the secretion of the antibody of desired specificity. This screening is done mostly by two techniques namely ELISA and RIA. Once the hybridoma cells producing the desired antibody are identified, they are isolated and cloned in the next step. So, Now we have separate clones of activated B cells each producing antibodies of a single specificity. In each case, the antibodies produced are known as monoclonal antibodies. In the final step, these hybridomas and monoclonal antibodies are characterized and stored. Mostly they are stored in liquid nitrogen. Now these monoclonal antibodies are ready to use in treating and diagnosing diseases. so students in this one image you can see all the steps okay uh, i hope it's clear to you now uh, if you have any questions you can ask in the meantime i can have your attendance and uh, you can now put your questions whatever questions you have Okay, so I'm starting with your attendance. Uh, by the time you can think of 
uh, whatever questions you have. Uh, so, So, uh, Yuvraj, are you there, Yuvraj? Yes. Adish, I'm going the other way today. Yeah, yes, sir, I... Yeah. Yuvraj, okay, you are not audible, but uh, I can see you have unmuted yourself. Okay, uh, Yukta? Yes, sir. Okay, Vivek? Uh, okay, Tridiv. Present, sir. Tanvi. Ivani. Shivani, Shakti, Present, sir. Sanjana, Present, sir. Sanjana, you are not visible. Sahiba. Present, sir. Okay. Uh, Rupal. Nehal. Present, sir. Present, sir. Nandini. Okay, Namrita. Present, sir. Manaswani. Present, sir. Shitej. Present, sir. Okay, Janvi. Present, sir. Ishita. Present, sir. Devanshi. Present, sir. Sam. Present, sir. Ayushi. Present, sir. Adish. Present, sir. Okay, so Shivani, you were left. Shivani. Okay, you are not audible, but you are visible. And uh, I think only Atoeba is missing then. Atoeba. So Atoeba is not there. So students, uh, any questions related to monoclonal antibodies? Yes, Shakti, you have some question. So Shakti, just switch on your camera. Oh, yes, sir. I'm visible. And Shakti, be a bit loud. Am I audible? Yes, Shakti, but uh, just be a bit more loud. Oh, yes, sir. Am I loud? Yes. Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, if we want... Uh, monoclonal antibody uh, 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 to a uh, specific epitope so why uh, we can't do just uh, remove the uh, just we take the general you know some part of that antigen which has that certain epitope and or maybe uh, we can remove uh, other epitopes like in the beginning can we do that okay see again yes you can do that but uh, i think we have talked about haptens right you remember Yes, sir. So just imagine you are putting a very small protein and expecting antibody against it. It may not be immunogenic, right? 
Yes, sir. But if you are putting whole antigen, the chances of getting antibodies against each epitope is will be there, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the reason. But yes, if you have a big epitope with have a single epitope, right? If you have a single antigen with only single epitope, then you can inject that particular single or that part of the antigen. So it all depends. You need to standardize, right? If you can get uh, antibody, good antibody response with a small uh, antigen, you can do that. Otherwise, you'll have to put a big antigen and then uh, you can separate out the monoclonal antibodies. Okay. Okay, sir. So, sir, uh, suppose if we want uh, monoclonal antibodies against cancer cells, so uh, we will just uh, take cancer cell and inject it in the mouse. Yes, you can either inject uh, the cancer cell, okay, or you can just take that particular epitope. Because see, what happens? A cancerous cell will produce a antigen or an epitope which is different, right? So that is also used for diagnostics, okay. And if you know that this is the different epitope from the normal uh, cell then you can just make that protein and inject it. Okay, so if it's a big protein, you, you can just inject the protein. Okay, uh, if not, then you can inject the whole cell. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And you know, uh, Shakti, it's a good question. Uh, you just took the example of cancer. So uh, monoclonal antibodies are being used for the treatment of cancer. And this is one of the application that uh, I will be discussing also. OK, uh, yes, sir. I uh, read an article about that. So yeah. that's fine. OK, OK. <clears throat> so any other question? Okay, students, so I think uh, we can just end the class now and uh, we'll meet after five minutes for the next class. Okay, and in that class, we will discuss uh, the applications of monoclonal antibodies. And uh, I don't know if you know or not that uh, even for COVID, uh, there were a lot of research uh, which used monoclonal antibodies. Okay, so we will see even that. Okay, so just have a five, seven minutes break and then we can uh, uh, discuss the applications of monoclonal antibodies. Okay, so I'm ending the class now.